Greetings and welcome. Today we're going to learn about how to use an external library in your code, and to do that you need to know how the preprocessor and linker work. As a quick recap, last time we talked about compilers, and a compiler's goal is to take some C code and figure out which instructions to use, so essentially converting it to assembly. The next step after that is to take an assembler, which is a program that will take assembly, and directly translate that into machine code. So between a compiler and an assembler, we can take our C code and convert it all the way into machine code. And this is what our workflow looks like to compile and upload code to our microcontroller. We start with AVRGCC, which can compile and assemble code. The goal is to get it to AVR Dude, which can push it over onto our microcontroller. And we had this AVR object copy in between to convert from the raw binary that this spits out into the Intel hex format, which AVR Dude can handle. We now know how to compile code that we wrote, but the question is how do we bring in code that other people have written and put it into our project? So our goal for today is to use external libraries and find a way to incorporate that into our code. Let's learn about the preprocessor. The preprocessor is anything that starts with the octothorpe or hash sign or pound symbol and then has something like define or maybe include after it. In a simple sense, the preprocessor is just an automated copy-paste machine. The first thing we're going to look at is a define statement. And a define is literally just a copy and replace. We do the pound sign define, and then we say what keyword we want to find. And then after that, we just put in what we want to replace it with. It's convention to keep the keyword in all caps so that way people know that you're using a preprocessor command. So if we were to use an example here where I do define Mitch to, that will look through our code and find anywhere that says the word Mitch and replace it with the number two. So an example here is if we called pin mode Mitch comma output, it would come through and find the word Mitch and replace it with the number two. One of the most common uses for a define statement is to make your code a little bit more readable. Instead of hard coding numbers like 13 and one in your code everywhere, you can kind of give them names or labels. So instead we could write our code to reference LED underscore built in and output instead of 13 and one. And then our code would look something like this where we say pin mode LED built in and output. And then when the preprocessor runs, it does a find and replace. It finds anywhere that we said LED built in and it replaces it with 13. And it finds anything that says output and replaces it with a one. So this is the code that actually gets compiled behind the scenes. You might be wondering why not use variables? Well, defined statements are copy paste. This will replace your code. This would be the exact same as if you were to put in 13 and one as an argument. Whereas if you use a variable, it's gonna allocate some memory in RAM, store a variable to it, and then reload that variable every time that you're trying to call this pin mode. So using defined statements are very nice when you don't have a whole lot of RAM memory at your disposal. Now be warned, because a defined statement will take whatever this keyword is, and then anything that comes after it will be replaced. So if I were to put a semicolon at the end where I've got LED built in 13 semicolon, then anywhere where it sees the word LED built in, it's going to replace it with 13 semicolon. So that would result in something like this, where we have pin mode 13 semicolon where we don't actually want that. So just be careful when you're doing this. So let's give this a shot. We're gonna write a program that includes code from a different file. So I'm gonna create a file, a program called Mitch.c using vim. And let's see how much of this I can remember. This is the same blink example code that we've used in the past few videos. And now inside of the infinite loop, we're going to include the code from our other file. So I'm going to go include main loop.txt. And that will take whatever is in this main loop.txt file and execute it here. So let's jump over to our other window here. And we're going to call a new file here. We're going to create it called main loop.txt. And inside of this, we're just going to do our for loops. So now if I save this code and we're running it, the preprocessor is going to take the contents of this file and plop it in here right at this line where we've got this include statement. So it would basically be like if I were to copy and paste it right now. Let's go ahead and write and quit. So we save that file. Let's do that same thing over here. We're going to write and quit to save this file. And now we're going to compile everything. And I am not going to have this all memorized. I have my little cheat sheet here. This is covered in the compilers video. First thing we're doing is using AVRGCC to compile our code. Uh, it looks like I've got an error in here. So we're gonna go vim mitch.c. Ah, look at that, I did my semicolon like exactly I told you not to do. So let's get rid of our semicolons, write and quit. Let's try this command one more time. So copy, paste, and run. Looks like it's good. If I type in ls, we can see that we have our a.out file. We're going to do our AVR object copy, which will turn our a.out file into a.hex file. So let's type in ls. 
we have our a.hex file and we can type in cat a.hex and see what's inside of it. Oh look, it's lots of binaries or lots of hex. And last but not least, we can take this and push it to our microcontroller. Now we can see that our code is blinking, so that looks like our include statement worked successfully. So if that's a bad way to use include, what is a better way? Let's create a file called mitchlib.c, and instead of just putting random code in it, we'll declare a function. And this function will be called delay, and it will just wait for a certain amount of time. Now once we've got that file, in our main code, we can do an include, which will then reference that library that we just created. And now we have access to this delay function. So anywhere in the rest of our code, we can call delay and pass in an amount of time to wait, and it will wait that long. If you're confused as to what's happening, just remember that this include statement is literally copy and pasting the contents from that other file in its place. So this would be the exact same as creating a function inside of main.c and just pasting that code at the very top. And then this makes a little bit more sense that when we call this, we're just referencing this function up here. So let's give this a shot. We already have a few files that are in here from before, and I'm just going to remove all of those. So if I type in ls, it's now empty. Let's jump over to our library window over here, and we're going to create a new file, and we'll call it vimmitchlib.c. In here, we're going to create our delay function. So we'll do void delay, and we'll say a long time. And the easiest way to go about doing this is just run a while loop that will decrement time. So we'll do while time is not equal to zero just do time minus minus. So it's just gonna keep decreasing time over and over again until it eventually hits zero, and that should kill time. Now there is one other thing that we need to do, and we need to tell the compiler that it needs to actually execute this. Even though it's dumb code and it's not actually doing anything, we wanna make sure that it still does it so that way we kill the appropriate amount of time. So we're gonna come in here and we'll say volatile long time. And that tells the compiler to not get rid of this and to not skip it, even though it's essentially doing nothing. Now we'll jump over to our main code. I'm going to start with our basic code structure. So now we're left with a basic blink example here where we set our pin 5 as an output, we turn the pin on, and then we immediately turn it off, and we do that inside of an infinite loop. So now our goal is to delay. So right off the bat, if I were to just come in here and say delay and do some amount of time, we'll do 10,000. I don't know how long this will be. I'm just kind of guessing. 10,000. Then what's going to happen is we're going to try to reference some function called delay. And right now we didn't include anything. So let's go ahead and compile this and see what happens. So I'm going to write and quit to save. I'm going to go back to my cheat sheet here. We're going to go to compile this. And now it's got a different name in here. So it's not Mitch.c anymore. This one is called main.c. And if we try to do it, it's going to say, hey, there's uh, you're trying to use a function called delay. And we don't know what delay is. So this is what it looks like if you don't include it. So we'll go back into Vim, and right at the top is where we're going to include our file. So we're going to do include, and we called it mitchlib.c, and that's this file that's right over here. And now that that's all good, we will write and quit to save that. And we're going to make sure that we write and quit here as well to make sure that that file is saved. And we'll try to compile one more time. And if we do that, it looks like there's no errors. So let's wrap this up by doing an AVR object copy. So we'll paste this in here. Type in ls to make sure that we have our .hex file, and then just have it. I like to type in cat a.hex. Yep, there's all of our hex stuff. And we're going to go ahead and do this. Paste in AVR dude. Upload the code. The LED was blinking way too fast, so I went back into my code and added an extra zero to the delay. But as you can see here, it seems to be blinking just fine now. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, linkers. The example that I just did works for a small example, but when you're working on a project that has a lot of different libraries that are being tied in together, it starts to break down a little bit. So let's look over an example where we're trying to reference these five libraries, and inside of each library there's a lot of code. So if we were to take that technique and repeat it here, and we've got our main source file here, and we include all of those .c files, which are all .libraries, and then stick our code underneath it, then what's this going to look like when it goes through the preprocessor? Well, it's going to get very big. The preprocessor is going to copy and paste the contents of all of those files directly into our main.c file, and then give all of that to the compiler.
And for a big project, that means that you're putting a lot of stress on the compiler and it's going to take quite a bit of time to program. Our libraries aren't going to be changing. This is code that was written a while ago and it's all perfected and tested. And all the stuff that we're changing is going to be in our main program and we're kind of just referencing these. So wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to recompile them every single time that we change something in our main.c file? Well, that's actually exactly what we're going to do. We will just compile all of these once, turn their .c code into machine code, and then when we're ready, we can take all of that machine code and tie it into our final program instead of copy-pasting it using the include statements. So at the end, we have all of our machine code for our libraries, and then we also have the machine code for our main program. And then the process of taking all of that and bundling it together is called linking. After you take all of those machine codes and put them together, you have your main program, which is ready to be written to the microcontroller. Our goal is to take the C code and generate some machine code, but not link it all together to create the final output. And there's a flag that we can use, which is dash C, when we're compiling with AVRGCC, and that tells the compiler to compile or assemble the source files, but do not link. So that'll create the machine code files that we'll then hold on to until we're ready to link everything together and create our final executable. We would run this for every single source file that we have. So we would run it once for our main code, but then also once for each of the libraries individually. Once we have all those machine code files and we're ready to link them all together, the way we do that is the exact same way as compiling. We just pass in all of the machine code files instead of the .c files, and it will bundle them up. Just make sure that you don't add the dash c flag here because we actually do want to link things together. Let's go ahead and try this out. So we have our michlib file over here, which has our delay function in it. And previously, we were including it using this include statement, which copies and pastes it right in here. But since we're trying to not copy and paste and we want to compile and link instead, we're just going to get rid of this line here, so we're no longer including it. So we're going to go ahead and jump out of here. We're going to save and quit. Now what we're going to try to do is compile this library, but not link it. And the way that we do that is, here's our little cheat sheet from before, we're going to add the dash C flag to compile but not link, and then we're going to change the name of this program that we're going to do. We're going to start with michlib.c, which is our delay function. So if we come in here, we can paste this in, and run this code, it looks like everything works out alright, and if we type in ls, we will see that we now have a michlib.o file, and that's the machine code file. So can we just try this again with our main program? So if we come in here, can we just do main.c? Uh-oh, this is yelling at us because it's saying that we have this implicit declaration of a function delay. So what's happening is when we're trying to compile this, all it's doing is looking at this one file. It doesn't even know this file exists. And if we go inside of it, we can go D, we can see that we're calling delay, but it doesn't know what delay is. And in a previous video, I mentioned what prototypes are. And prototypes are kind of a way of hinting to the compiler how to run something. And that's what we're going to do here, is a thing called a prototype. And we're going to put it all the way up at the top here. And we're just going to say void delay long. And what this does is it tells the compiler, hey, there's a function that's called delay, and it takes in a long as an argument. And you don't need to know the details of it. We'll give you all of the body for it later, but that'll at least shut it up for this. So that way it knows that this is valid, and it will allow it to compile. Then when it gets to the linker stage, it will find the actual source code, which is in a different file, and link the two together. So now that we have this prototype up top, we can go right and quit. We can try to repeat that command here, where we're going to try to compile but not link our main.c file, and we can see that everything is happy. Now we can type in ls, and we see that we have a main.o and a michlib.o file, and our goal is to take those two files, squish them together to get our final executable. And the way that we do that is the same idea. AVR GCC, this time we don't do the dash C flag, but we're going to still do the MMCU equals AT Mega 328. And now we pass in all of the machine code files, which would be main.o and michlib.o. And we ran that, we can type in ls, and we see that we have our a.out file. The a.out file can then be converted into a hex file by using AVR object copy. This is starting to get tedious. I wish there was a way to automate this. And flash it to the microcontroller. Hooray, it works. Okay, cool. So we're on a roll. We're able to use an external file and link it all together. But do we really need to add a prototype for every single function that we're going to call in our main.c? It doesn't seem like we've done much if we're still listing off all of the different functions. 
What if we just took all of those prototypes, moved them into a separate file called all the prototypes.h, listed them out here, and then just did an include statement here. And that way it's out of our main.c file and it's all organized here. We're on the right track. That is similar to what we're going for, but we can do a little bit better than this. Instead of having all of the prototypes in one file, we're going to organize them based on the library. So we have this timing.h file, which has the prototypes for all of the functions within the timing.c that we created. And then whenever we want to use it, we just type in include timing.h. And now this code here, when it tries to run delay, it says, do I know what delay is? Well, this information is copy pasted here. And since there's a prototype, it tells the compiler how to run the delay. So it's happy. So the body of the code still isn't here and it doesn't need to be. But then when we link everything together, timing.c will have the real body of it and it'll merge into our executable. And yes, if I compile and upload this code, it is still working. Now there's still a few technicalities we need to think about. First of all, let's pretend that we want to use our delay function in here, so we include our timing.h, which is where our delay function lives. But then we also maybe want to use serial to print some stuff to a screen, so we include a serial library. But maybe that serial library also includes timing because maybe it needs to also delay for whatever reason. Well, this becomes a problem because when the preprocessor reads this serial.h, it copies and pastes this whole file, and we end up with this. So as you can see, we are including the same file twice. And when you take it another step further, you can see that we take the contents of timing.h and paste that into there. And now we've got this duplicate code. To prevent this, let's create a define statement. We're just going to make something called define, and then Mitch is cool, and we can give it whatever value we want. And then I'm going to introduce this new thing called if and def, and that stands for if not defined. And if we pass in this right here, what this is going to do is tell the preprocessor, if this thing is not defined, then we're allowed to execute everything until we hit this end if tag. But if it is defined, it doesn't even process this at all. It just it's as if you highlight it all and hit delete. Now this is really cool because if we were to process this for the very first time, we would say, have we defined this thing called Mitch is cool? And no, we haven't seen that yet. Then immediately after that, we define it. So then we continue doing the rest of our code and we end the if statement. But now if something else references this, we get to this line of code and it says, hey preprocessor, have you heard of Mitch is cool before? And it says, yes, I have heard about this. So then it just skips all the way to the end of the file and it doesn't include everything a second time. We can clean this up another step further. Uh, people tend to use a name instead of just something called Mitch is cool. They want to use something that is tied to the file name. So if we're calling something called timing.h, we would do something that is underscore, underscore, timing, underscore, h, underscore, underscore. There's variants on this, but they almost always start and end with a double underscore. So we would just say if and def timing h, and you can actually do a define statement too without giving it a variable name or a value, I should say. So you can just say define this, and now it's defined. It's defined as nothing, but it is defined. So doing this prevents you from executing the same code twice. And one more final thing, it is very common to include the .h file from the .c file. So we have our implementation over here in the timing.c, it's typical to say include timing.h as well. And the reason for that is because a lot of the configuration or setup sometimes lives in timing.h. So maybe delay here, what we do depends on our processor speed or our clock speed. So we might have defined that with a defined statement somewhere in timing.h. So we can make sure to take advantage of any defined statements in the timing.h file within the timing.c file by adding this include line. All right, so you know the drill, let's try this out. First things we're going to do is add the protection headers. So we're going to say if and def uh, Mitch lib, I oh, all caps, Mitch lib underscore h underscore underscore. So if that's not defined, then we're going to define it. Mitch lib underscore h underscore underscore. And then we have all of our code in here. And at the very end, we're going to end our if statement. So that prevents us from executing this more than once. Then up top in here, just to, as convention, we're going to add a include Mitch lib.h. So that way we can take advantage of anything that we might have declared inside of here. And let's exit out of here. Exit out of here and upload and run the code. <laughs> well, would you look at that? And that's everything. Now we finally covered linkers. 
My next video is going to be talking about optimization, which is telling the compiler to go through your code and remove stuff that doesn't need to be there, or maybe even rearrange it in a way to make your program smaller or rearrange it in a way to make it faster. So until then, I'll see you next time.